June 1st marks Gun Violence Awareness Month. Here in New York, mayors from around the state are coming together to fight the epidemic of gun violence in their cities. Mayor Adams joined six other mayors to form a coalition that will partner with anti-violence advocates and faith leaders to address the problem and raise awareness. Gun violence is not just a Buffalo or New York State problem. It's a national crisis. Over the last 17 days, we have continued to witness the dark reality of gun violence in America. From the mass shooting right here in Buffalo to the tragedy in Uvalde, Texas, plus an additional 24 lives lost across 10 states in other gun incidents. This is something that we're all dealing with uh, in our cities. This is not a local problem, as Mayor Brown stated. Uh, the shooting that took place in Buffalo is no different than the shootings that take place on Buffalo Avenue in Brooklyn. All across the country, we are seeing mayors wrestle with how to address this overproliferation of guns in our cities. As communities across the nation, like Buffalo and Uvalde, Texas, continue to mourn recent mass shootings, religious leaders here in New York will deliver sermons this weekend in what's being called the Weekend of Faith. But it will take more than prayer to solve this country's gun debate. Joining me now is Kay Bain. He's the founder and executive director of Community Capacity Development, which specializes in locally led public safety and anti-gun violence initiatives. Mr. Bain, thank you so much for being here. Um, it's been such a tough few weeks in this nation, uh, these poor people in Uvalde and in Buffalo, the families. Uh, and yet, when you hear the debate, I just heard a congresswoman say that her top priority was to perhaps make sure that schools have uh, just one door so security would be easier. And while I'm all in favor of school safety, you, you scratch your head and say, is there any way really to solve this when we're on two sides of this big divide? What do you think? I think, um First and foremost, Dick, thank you for, for this conversation. This dialogue is needed right now. The mayors are all echoing the fact that this is a national crisis. This is not local. This is not New York City or New York State. But I'm, I'm very excited about the fact that New York City and New York State are stepping up in, I think, new and innovative ways to raise the consciousness level and the awareness around this pandemic of gun violence. This is not something that we have to go back 17 days and stop. We have had and continue to have a serious, serious problem with gun violence in this nation. And yeah, and just in the last couple of years, um, a lot of people are saying New York has been going back to those of us who remember the, the 80s, uh, the bad old days. Um, and we talk about the Iron Pipeline and issues that have to be addressed. But we also know that the Iron Pipeline has always been there. And yet in the last few right. years, gun violence has really gotten out of control in this city. Why is that? Well, the wealth gap in this, in this country has gotten worse since the 80s is quadrupled. The average median income in black families, from our understanding, is around 11,000 annually. For white families in this nation, it's 142,000. People know that. The poverty line is someplace that some of us are too familiar with for too long. The pandemic of COVID-19 has exacerbated a lot of these issues in food deserts in public education, the problems and issues there, lack of resources and technologies. Students have not been learning in this country for quite some time. You put all of this together, you put all of these social um, restrictions, disinvestment, you compound it over time, you add COVID-19. And here's the thing, we talk about supply and demand, access to firearms, that is a critical issue, right? That is super, it's um, important that we focus on it, but there's also mental health issues. There's also, again, the disinvestment that has been allowed to continue, and, and many benefit from it. You look at prison industrial complex. You look at what we spend on incarceration versus education. Look at all of these things. Add the access to firearms, and here we go. If, if there is one thing, and I know you mentioned so many important things there, but what is the one thing you'd love to say right now, if I could do this, it would perhaps have the greatest impact, what would that be? I think we have to address structural racism, and we have to look at systemic white supremacy. We have to look at the fact that there are generations of people 
that have been intentionally positioned and marginalized outside of access and opportunity. We have to look at the fact that you can't legislate people to treat each other with humanity and respect. We, we can't do that, but what can we do? We can invest in, again, in things that we see solutions, things that we see work um, constantly. The work I do in New York City and now in 17 jurisdictions around the country under uh, in a, an operation called Civic, Core 5, there's five groups that are doing this work with 53 organizations, are looking at the core issues, are looking at what the byproduct we see is violence, but what's going on before this? No rational or healthy or mentally astute person, 18 or 80 years old, would pick up a firearm, go into a community, and kill men, women, and children. There's something deeper going on that this country has to address and has to face in order for us to see a change. I have to ask you, uh, the June 3rd, June 3rd, I should say, is where we're orange for gun violence awareness uh, day. Um, and it's great to raise awareness. We do this for uh, drunk driving and other issues. Um, do these campaigns work in your mind? So I think that, you know, I understand why people say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna come together, we're orange, we're gonna light up uh, buildings and municipalities, but awareness and consciousness is a part of a human justice equation that I subscribe to. My understanding is if you have human rights being met, and people understanding their rights and being treated with dignity and fairness. But that is something that we push out to the world and make important. And then we couple that with human development, which is resources actually being given, distributed to people most impacted, most in need. Then we will arrive at human justice. Well, Mr. Bain, I have to tell you, I know you, I wish we had more time, but I know you were on the front lines and you've been doing it for a lot of years and, and you are a New Yorker through and through. And I can only say keep doing it because so many people out there need your help. And thank you so much. Thank you. Your support means a lot. We appreciate you being there with us. Come out, get involved in these activities. We need media to be informed, to be responsible, to work with us on spreading this message of pushing peace forward in safe summer 22. Kay Bain, let this be a start, and thank you so much for being here. If you'd like more information about Gun Violence Awareness Month, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com.